Hello everyone, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you what you need to know about using PNG or other images inside of DaVinci Resolve 17 for your video editing. So when you have a project opened up, you can import images directly into your media pool the same way you can other assets like a video file. So if you navigate on your computer to where you have some PNG images stored, simply drag them from Finder or Windows File Explorer into your media pool and just drag and drop and they should place right in here. As you can see, this also is going to work with JPEGs and other image types as well. But one of the big advantages of a PNG, of course, is that it can have a transparency layer on the image. So to show so to show why that's so beneficial, if you don't already know, let's add a video clip to the timeline and then we'll position a PNG image on top of it. So let me cut away this stuff and let's drag a video clip onto the timeline. So just drag this whole thing here. Okay, so that'll be our main background video clip. Let's add a new video track now. So we can either drag a clip onto the timeline right above video track one, like this, which will automatically create video track two, or you can right click above video track one and choose add track. Either way, same result. So now let's add a PNG image onto video layer two. So whatever is on the highest layer is going to show on top of everything else. So something you might notice about these images you bring in is that regardless of the size of the original image, it's going to automatically stretch itself to match the size of your video frame. So you're probably going to need to adjust the zoom and position of your PNG image, especially if you're trying to use a watermark. So let's take this logo here and position it in one of the corners. So I will start by taking the zoom property and the inspector top right on the edit page. And let's shrink this down to where it will be a nice size where we can see it, but it doesn't cover the rest of the screen. And now let's adjust position X and move it to the right side of the screen and then use Y to move it up to the top. Now it's worth mentioning that for these images that are on the timeline, you can make changes to them in the same way you could a video clip. So if you need to animate the position or the zoom, you still have your keyframing diamonds over here to change the property across time. And you can also take these images and go over to the fusion page if you want to add some modifying tools onto it. So for instance, this logo is gray and hard to see by default. So let's have media in one selected and then let's add in a node in front of it by clicking up here for color corrector. So the color corrector node is kind of an all in one for modifying the color on our image here. So to adjust the brightness of our logo, instead of adjusting brightness actually, which would affect the entire screen even where we have transparency, let's adjust the gamma, which is only going to adjust the areas which actually have some color information already. And now let's take the hue adjuster and push it towards red. And to make it more bright rather than this kind of muted color, let's crank up the saturation on it. So this will change it to a rather vivid red. And if we go back to the edit page, we can see how this actually affected our logo. So I can click up here in the preview window to bypass color grades and fusion effects, turning everything off. And we can see the difference here. So the main takeaway there is just that if you need to adjust your PNG images or animate them, you can do that just like you can with the video clip. So you may also know from some of my previous tutorials that you can actually mask a video with a PNG image as well. So I will show that trick real quick in this video. So I'm gonna go over here and then I'm gonna select my video clip. Let's go to the Fusion page. So now we're editing the video clip directly. So to add a mask here, I can either click on Media Pool and grab one from the project in the Media Pool, or you can actually just drag and drop from your File Explorer. So let's throw a logo in here. And then I'm just gonna connect this straight to Media in. So we can see that this is looking kind of funny. So the way to kind of get this to show correctly, I'll right click in front of media in two, which is the PNG image serving as a mask. Let's do add tool, transform, transform. And then for edges canvas, instead of canvas, I'm going to change this to duplicate. And now we get our shape back. So you can see how this matches the Godot logo right there, just a little bit bigger. And with the transform node as well, you can scale it up or down or reposition it. So if we go to the edit page now, you can see that anywhere that falls outside of this mask is just shown as black. And we could put in another video layer behind it if we wanted to. So I'll just move everything up one layer. And let's go ahead and just grab one more video clip for the project and position it on video one. So you can see that video one is the background layer. 
video two is a layer of video that sits on top of it, but it only shows where the mask is actually showing. And then we have that uh, Unity logo serving as kind of a watermark. So we can have all three of those playing at once. And you can see with a masked out video, you can get kind of a cool effect because you get to show video inside of the shape of your PNG images. So real quick, let's actually talk about exporting PNG or JPEG images from DaVinci Resolve. So of course, DaVinci Resolve is a video editor, but you can take a single frame and export that as a JPEG or PNG image, which is great for making thumbnails, for instance. So the place to do that is going to be over on the color page. So click on color next to fusion. So as you can see here in the preview window, you're still going to be looking at all of your tracks layered on top of each other. So if you have a title added on to your video or anything like that, you can grab that in here as well. So to grab a single image, let's right click and do grab still. So when you do that, it's taking a frozen frame exactly where you are in the timeline and putting it in a little image over here. So if we want to take this and export it to JPEG or PNG, we can right click on it and choose export. So I just put it in here. Let's give it a file name. So I'll call it PNG test and let's use the drop down. So make sure you select PNG files here. Okay, export. And then let's export this one more time. Right click export and I'll just do JPEG test. So let's export that as a JPEG there. Okay, and now one more thing I'm gonna wanna do is uh, disable video track one when I'm doing this so that we have that black screen information on the outside. So let's disable video track one on the edit page. Let's go back over, let's grab a new still, right click, grab still, and let's export this as a PNG. So I'll call this PNG test two. I'll click on the drop down PNG. Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is that one of the advantages of PNGs as a format is that they can have an alpha layer for transparency that allows you to show a logo without the image looking like a perfectly square rectangular box, but it can basically have any shape because of the transparency. So let's take a look at what we've got now. So here in the folder I exported them to, we have our three images. So let's open them up and just compare real quick. So here we have the JPEG image. You can see it's exactly as we would expect. We also have the PNG test, which is gonna look the exact same here. You can notice there's actually no difference at all between them. And we can bring in PNG test two. So PNG test two, as you can see, the black area in the video is not made transparent. So it's definitely worth pointing out that when you export a PNG from Resolve, although PNGs can support the transparency layer, that your video is not going to have that transparency when you export it as an image. So just be aware of that. And if you just want to be file size efficient, you're usually just better off exporting as a JPEG because as you can see, there's not actually going to be any difference between them. So this is JPEG and then that was the PNG from the first export. In here to point out the difference, you can see that the JPEG test has a file size on disk of 963 kilobytes, but the PNG is over six times that with 6.2 megabytes. So probably most of you knew that, but if you didn't, just know that JPEG is usually a more efficient format because it doesn't allow for alpha as a uh, extra layer of complexity. Really quick back in Resolve, let's show how you can actually animate a PNG image on the screen. So we have our Unity logo over here in the top right. Let's adjust its position across time. So you can have your images be as long or short of a duration as you want in your timeline. As you can see, it's just going to stay the same because the image is static if it's a JPEG or PNG. Uh, but we can animate it. So you just pick a point in time where you want it to start moving. Uh, let's say that at um, right about here is actually where we want it to be in this position. And before that, it's off screen. So I'm going to keyframe the position there. Let's go back a little bit and let's move it off screen by pushing it further to the right. OK, um, just right off the screen, like right there. OK, so now if I go to the start of our image being in the video here and I hit play, we can see our image slides under the screen. So likewise, we can go to the end here, keyframe it which adds a animation point, go a bit further, and then let's move it off the screen again. So now it's going to slide onto the screen. And at the end, it's going to move off the screen. So you could do this with other things too, like opacity, for instance, so 100% opacity here. And then let's move a little bit further and lower the opacity. As you can see, this turns it kind of invisible. And then further on, 
we can just set it back to 100% opacity. So this is going to make it fade out and then fade back in. And you can see how it animates between those keyframe points. So if you've ever used keyframes in Resolve, it works the same way with images as you can see there. So that is pretty much everything you're going to need to know about PNG and JPEG images inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I hope this video was helpful for all of you. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.